Right, let me show you what we got going on today. Freezer, negative three. But our problem is all this moisture on our freezer ceiling. It's all that frost and everything else. Now this is a brand new build. It's a brand new location. And their walk-in cooler actually has a roof leak and water's dripping down into the into the cooler itself and forming puddles. So a part of me thinks that between the actual rubber roof membrane and the top of this of this walk-in cooler box, there might be water sitting up there due to a roof leak. Uh, most of the time when I see issues like this, it's usually a defrost issue where it's you know defrosting too much, um, staying in defrost too long so the box actually warms up and you know, condensation forms on the ceiling. Or the fan delay, I guess, could also um, cause sort of an issue. But usually if, if there's a fan delay issue, I'll see a lot more of these little droplets in front of the fan because our compressor would kick on and our fans would kick on almost immediately and there'd be uh, hardly any drip time for that evaporator coil. And so all that uh, remaining condensation that was melted off during the defrost cycle would just get shot out the front by the evaporator fans and most of it would be stuck up on the on the ceiling there. So well, it looks like we have a good amount of defrosts. Three 45 minute defrosts. So I'm gonna watch that defrost clock for one, make sure it is rotating. And then what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it in manual defrost and just watch my X terminal just to make sure my uh, early termination switch, my defrost termination switch kicks in and shuts it down. All right, so I'm hooked up to my X terminal and we're gonna put this thing in defrost. Sounds like one of our fan blades is hitting a little bit of hitting a little bit of ice. All right, heaters are on. So now what should happen? when that defrost termination switch warms up and it closes, I should have zero volts going across it from X to N to my neutral. So that's what we're waiting for. It might take a little while guys, so I'm gonna shut the camera off, step outside this box real quick and warm up. Just hoping to get up above this cooler and take a peek at the top of this box but looks like we don't have access to that. All right here guys, is our walk-in cooler. We have standing water in here and the manager says that whenever it rains, they got water just kind of seeping out of the walls. Um, he never said there was any really dripping down from the roof, but if you'll notice, you kind of notice right over here around these these plugs, there's a little bit of watermark. So he said it'll drip down through there, kind of seep through the, the panels. So I'm pretty sure we have a roof leak or some sort of leak. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to the freezer. I'm gonna double check these plugs and see if our insulated panels are just full of moisture. It's got moisture in there, frozen moisture. That one, not as bad. Hardly anything in that one. Yeah, I got some. 
That one's all froze up. Huh. Well, to be honest, I've never really seen that problem before. So I just wanted to share this real quick. So I found this, and it's sort of a weird ice pattern because it's not really attached to the uh, the coil. It almost looks like it was formed from, I guess, water sitting in top of this coil, like right above the fan, and it would just freeze and slowly drip down to form this this weird iceberg. Yeah, it's a it's a weird frost pattern. Yeah, nothing on that side. Just a little bit in the grill guard, finger guard, if you will. Yeah, the rest of the coil is clear. The back side, front side. There's all this condensation. Yeah, see it's even up there underneath this, um, whatever you call this panel, between the top of this fabric coil and the actual box. So we're still in defrost. Uh, the box temperature rose to about seven degrees and apparently our defrost termination switch isn't warm enough, so nothing has changed yet. I think I'm going to pull the panel off that side just to double check everything. Alright guys, at first glance I don't see anything out of the ordinary. We got our heaters in the bottom of the pan, two heaters going across the back. Right here is our high limit. Back here we got our defrost termination fan delay. Looks like we have a relay right there. Not real sure what that relay does yet. Maybe it's a relay to help engage our heaters, that would make sense. Tell our ceiling is start to thaw as well. All right, if you'll notice right there, it looks like our defrost termination switch has kicked in, and we are now out of defrost. So our issue isn't the unit staying in defrost too long, and our fans are not on yet, which is good because I have that fan blade off. So I'm going to have to go shut this down real quick. So since that's not our problem, we're going to have to take a look on the roof and see if we have some moisture penetrating somewhere, which I believe is the case. I'm sure some of you guys out there have experienced this before. Let me know what you think. Share some stories. Alright guys, just wrapping up here real quick. Tech tip of the day, before you put these finger guards back on, make sure you put the fan blade back on. I was on the phone when I was putting these back on and apparently my left side of my brain must not have been working because I put the grill guard on without actually putting the fan blade on. So don't do that because it's not going to move any air if you don't put a fan blade on. Alright, let me set this down and get back to it. Here we are on top of this location. Just kind of noticing our, our line set here. I'm just up here looking for any obvious, obvious leaks, any cuts in the rubber membrane. Huh. I don't know much about roofing, but I feel like should have done a little bit better job with this. Maybe put a uh, 
some curb or uh, some sort of a flashing material right there around that. Right over there, that is our walk-in cooler. You check out that amazing line set. That line set looks like garbage. The other thing too is this line set isn't actually not actually fastened down to any of these rubber blocks, which doesn't make any sense. You know, sometimes we get a lot of wind up here in Michigan, and uh, I mean that thing will go bouncing around. You're gonna get a crack or something in there eventually. I'm not gonna pretend like I know all the codes or anything, but that doesn't seem like it's up to code. Right there too, eventually that's gonna, that's just gonna cut right through and short out. I know this is, what is this, SOJ cord maybe? Sun resistant, oil resistant, but I don't think it's rated to be outside. I could be wrong, again. I'm not going to be one of those guys who pretends to know all the codes because I don't. Real quick before I get off the roof, I just noticed this. So right now I'm standing on top of our walk-in cooler. If you remember over in the corner we had standing water inside the walk-in cooler. So if you look at right here, we just got some silicone that apparently was put there to fix uh, some some sort of leak at some point in time. So I'm not a roofer. I don't know anything about fixing these. But I assume just putting a bead of caulk around there isn't really going to fix the problem. You need to actually take that off, clean the rubber, flash it properly, put a new piece of rubber across it, I guess. So that's probably why we have standing water in that cooler. Alright guys, so we're back down inside this walk-in freezer. I wanted to point something out real quick here. So right there, you'll notice that seam. Uh, that seam has opened up pretty wide, especially when you compare it to you know, some of these other seams. So, based on our frost pattern, I believe we just have warm air infiltrating this box. Most likely from this seam, uh, there was a seam over here that looked kind of wide as well. Uh, up there, it's kind of hard to see, but there's a, a little bit of an opening in that, that back wall right there. And then kind of behind this right here, you can see that uh, it's not a real tight, a tight fit in between there. Now, the problem is, how do we address this? This, uh, How do we come up with a solution? My only idea is that we would have to remove everything out of this freezer, uh, shut it down, let it thaw, let the walls thaw, because the walls are full of moisture and they're frozen, uh, bring in dehumidifiers, heaters, warm it up, try to get as much moisture out of there as possible, get the, uh, the roof leak fixed for the walk-in cooler, and I believe... I believe there's a leak up there somewhere that's also bringing in a little bit of uh, uh, moisture up above this. But uh, I was talking to my buddy Chris Stevens, and um, he had mentioned, you know, he, he said obviously if there was a leak, I would probably have a giant icicle hanging down from the ceiling to the floor, which makes sense. Um, but there's quite a bit of moisture in here. All right, guys, let's talk about what you just saw there. So... I don't think I mentioned this in the video, but that was actually a warranty call from Norlake. And uh, obviously because it was such a new build, the box and equipment was still under warranty. So I went back to the manufacturer, Norlake, and uh, made some suggestions to them. And uh, one thing I also tried, I didn't get this on film, but uh, I did try to tighten the, the inner locking, I guess they're locking bars, locking arms, whatever that connect those ceiling panels together. I just took a 5 16 Allen wrench, jammed it up in there, and tried to get those locking arms to close a little bit tighter, to get that seam to close a little bit tighter, but it really didn't work. The ceiling panels don't want to move. And since I don't see any other place that uh, warm air is infiltrating the box, so I went back to the manufacturer and explained that I believe warm air is infiltrating through the seams in the ceiling panel, 
possibly. Maybe a little bit of moisture from a roof leak as well. I'm not 100% sure because I'm not a roofer. Um, so I put in a bid to go back, shut the freezer down, let it thaw for a day or two, and then we'll run some silver caulk through those seams and get everything sealed up nice and tight. And then we'll let the box run for a couple days and then we'll reevaluate it, see if our problem has been solved or see if we still have uh, frost on the ceiling, see if we still have some sort of warm air infiltrating or uh, whatever the case may be at the time. But for now, that's where it stands. All right, guys. So hope you like this video. Hit that like and subscribe button for me. And uh, if there's a follow-up, I'll let you know. If not, this will be the end of it. All right. We'll see you on the next one.